What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be working on my Civic. Now in particular, we're gonna be taking care of the bushings on this car. So given that every ninth gen, when it comes off the factory floor, comes equipped with rubber bushings found in the suspension, found throughout the vehicle. And the reason why they use rubber is because it's soft, it's cheap, it lasts a decent long time, but it gives a nice ride. However, it has the most amount of deflection over any bushing that you can throw on a vehicle. Now, we're gonna be changing that out because we don't really care too much about comfort. We're looking more for performance. I checked online to see if there was any kind of bushing kit that was available for the ninth gen, and there's some companies that offer maybe one or two bushings, but there's no full master kit. And at the same time, you can't replace every single bushing on this car anyways. So, what do you do in that situation? So I started off with a master eighth gen kit from Energy Suspension. Now I tried installing some of those components in some of the suspension parts for the ninth gen, however, it didn't necessarily work. So I had a bunch of leftover bushings. So I wanted to try another kit. So this kit here is from Prothane and this is also for an eighth gen. Now I was hoping that given that it came with different accessories and different parts, maybe I'd find a different result. However, that didn't work either. So what exactly did I get done to get the bushings on the rear and front of my control arms changed out? I did a spherical front bushing from Full Race. I have a energy suspension rear bushing for the front control arm. So this bushing here and this bushing for the rear suspension. These are the only two that work. In addition to the two bushings that I have right here, which are for the rear shocks. So the rear shocks for the eighth and ninth gen are the same, so I can use these. Now, as for the other bushing, so this one here, this one back here on the other side of the knuckle, those I had to get custom made, and this front bushing here, I could not get swapped out. Now, let me explain why. So most of the bushings that we have right here, the old ones, these essentially get pressed out, okay? From the front to the rear, uh, these are the rear shock bushings. These you literally just remove after you remove the shock or disconnect the, uh, the shock body. Now I tried doing a custom route where I was making my own mold out of a 3D printed plastic, making my own polyurethane for here. And this was the final product. However, this didn't exactly work out as planned. I tried customizing a couple other bushings from energy suspension to get them to work and no luck. However, the rear bushing here, the bushing itself does fit. However, this does not come with the metal sleeve that you need that attaches to the body of the car. So the metal portion that goes in between this bushing is a two piece design where the one end is pressed into the other. And there's not really an easy way to separate the two. So I purchased a, uh, another rear trailing arm to see how this was designed and I figured out how it worked. However, there's no way uh, in my mind that you could separate the two pieces together. So unless there's a company that makes this rear bolt or like this rear bracket section separate, I don't know how to install that rear bushing. However, the polyurethane itself does fit inside here for the ninth gen. I'm genuinely surprised that there's no kit for the ninth gen Civic that replaces every bushing for the car. If there was one, you guys know for a fact that I would have it. However, I don't know if there's anything on the market. Um, I've done a bunch of research with no luck. So this is the best solution for the ninth gen cars. So this is all for a 2015 Honda Civic, the 2012 through 2015 sedan and coupes. From my understanding, they run the same suspension. Now the coilovers are different between the SI and non-SI models for the 20, uh, what is it, 2012 to 13. So all of those are the same. However, the 14 and 15 SI are different, but that's just because of the front knuckle. That doesn't affect what we're changing out here today. So that's enough talking. Let me show you how to install the rest of the bushings on the driver side components of the car. Passenger side is right here. This I'm gonna install. Let's get started with the driver side. So getting started with the front suspension, the front lower control arm is the only component that has rubber bushings in it, so we have the one bushing found at the front, we have another one at the back, and then on the bottom side of the spindle, we'll find two nuts and a single bolt that hold the lower ball joint in place. Using a 19 millimeter socket, remove the large bolt that goes through the subframe and into the control arm bushing. Then using a 14 mil socket, 
remove the horizontal bolt going through the other front control arm bushing. Under the lower ball joint, we'll find the 17 millimeter hardware that needs to be removed. With the help of a pry bar, you should be able to angle the front control arm down, allowing the arm to come out from the front subframe. That's about it for the front. Next up is the rear. Now, I'm not gonna lie with you guys, it is going to be a little bit more complicated because we do have the suspension to work with. We have the brakes right here. We have the brake line. We have the wheel speed sensor, the parking brake cable, and brake fluid still in this caliper. So there's a little bit more to do on this side. However, it definitely is still manageable. On a front wheel drive car, if you guys are looking to get most of the performance done, you're gonna pretty much only do the front control arm. However, if you do wanna upgrade the suspension everywhere and change out all the bushings, this is what you have to do. You might be able to get this job done without removing the rear brake calipers, but I'm going to give the brakes a little bit of a refresh while I'm in here, so they're coming out. That means removing the two caliper mounting bolts, removing the brake line banjo bolt, swinging the caliper out of the way, followed by removing the two carrier mounting bolts which will allow you to set the carrier and the pads aside. To disconnect the parking brake cable from the trailing arm, there will be two 10 mil bolts securing it in place. One of them is very clear to be seen right here, and the other is tucked behind the brake shield, also secured with a 10 mil. You can then move the caliper and cable out of the way. As for the wheel speed sensor, to remove it and give yourself a little bit more room to work with, spray some silicone lubricant on the plastic clips and then pinch the tabs together using some needle nose pliers to slide it out from the two brackets. The sensor itself will be secured into the rear knuckle by a single 10 mil bolt. Once removed, grab some pliers or channel locks and give the end of the sensor a little wiggle until the corrosion loosens and allows you to extract the sensor from the hole. On the back side of the knuckle, we'll find a little bracket where the wheel speed sensor was bolted to, which is also the brake line bracket. To undo the bracket, remove this 10 mil bolt. Following that, to disconnect the rear end link, you'll need a 14 millimeter open-ended wrench along with an Allen key or an Allen socket. Place the Allen key inside the shaft of the end link with the open-ended wrench on the nut. Loosen it until you can remove the nut and then slide one end of the link off of the trailing arm. It's a good idea to place the nut back onto the link so you don't misplace it during the reassembly. Next up, we're going to remove the factory shock absorber. To do that, go into the trunk of your car and remove the three plastic push clips that secure the liner. When you pull the liner back, it will expose the single 14 mil nut that's securing the shock absorber to the body. You can use a cordless ratchet or a wrench and Allen key to remove the nut. Whatever you guys have will do the trick. Once you remove the nut, you want to take off the metal washer. You can also remove one of the rubber bumpers if you plan on changing it out for the upgraded polyurethane ones from energy suspension, but we'll get to that shortly. Moving back into the wheel well area, the lower shock bolt can be removed. That will allow you to pull the shock absorber from the chassis. Take note that there's another rubber shock bumper that's bottom mounted. Notice the orientation of this one is opposite to that of the one that's found in the trunk. With the shock absorber removed, we can push down on the hub assembly, which will remove the spring preload, allowing the spring to be taken out. Just a heads up, if you haven't disconnected the sway bar before this step, it'll be much harder to get rid of the preload. Moving on, we can remove the rear trailing arm bolts. Now there's going to be one that's found at the rear mounting point towards the center of the car, and then another two found by the front mounting point that thread into the body itself. The two front mounting bolts are the same size, however they thread vertically into the chassis. So remove these guys however you can. This next part isn't quite fun. I'm not gonna hide it or edit this part out, just so you guys have an idea what you could be getting into by doing this kind of job. The last bolt to remove at this point is the camber arm bolt that connects to the knuckle. When I tried to undo it, it wouldn't budge at all. And I'm guessing the person that installed the Skunk 2 lowering springs on the car tightened that upper bolt as hard as they could in addition to that, compound the tight bolt with a semi-rounded off head, sprinkle a little bit of corrosion in there, and we have a recipe for disaster. So even though my socket was fully seated onto the bolt head, there was no way that bolt was going to come out nicely. So after rounding off the bolt, I was able to get it out. However, it also meant I had to wait four days for a replacement one from Honda to come in. 
If you guys can, don't try and do this install on a Friday or Saturday if you guys know you can't get parts until the Monday, if not later. Given I knew that I had a ton of mods incoming for the Civic, I planned ahead and I bought another daily to replace my daily, but that's also gonna be for another video. So, moving forward, with the camber arm bolt removed, the spindle and rear trailing arm can be taken out as one piece. So once you have this entire assembly removed from the car, you can continue to remove the rotor, the hub, and the dust shield. However, it isn't necessary so that we can get access to the two bushings found on the knuckle on the rear of the car. So we have one bushing found right here that's gonna get replaced, another one right here, another one on the rear end of the trailing arm, and if you guys do have access to remove this pin, or if you have another one to replace it with, you can install the energy suspension polyurethane bushings in this location. So in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is remove all of those bushings, the one, two, three here, and the two for the front control arms so that we can get started with installing the aftermarket ones on our new arms. So let's get started with the fronts. If you're ambitious, you might be able to figure out a way to remove and install the bushings by using a hammer or an assortment of other items like pieces of two by fours or pipes. However, using a hammer and sockets isn't exactly ideal. I'm gonna be doing this the somewhat proper way by using an assortment of different sleeves and sockets in addition to a small shop press and bench vise to press out and in the bushings. Beginning with changing the bushings in the front lower control arm, I'm gonna commence with a smaller rearward horizontal bushing. So to remove any bushing from an arm, you'll need something to push on the bushing itself, and then you'll need some sort of sleeve that will accept the pressed out bushing as it's moving through the arm. So I'm using a 17 mil half inch deep socket, along with a three inch section of pipe that fits around the metal portion of the control arm. If you're trying to remove a factory bushing, you might not always be able to salvage it. However, in this case, you can see that the bushing is coming out in one shot with very little hesitation. The bushing will fall into the pipe and leave your control arm ready to accept the new aftermarket bushing. You can see the factory one here is completely intact. On to the big one. Since this bushing and the respective hole for the control arm are much larger than the last one, we can't use the same tools to press it out. So I'm using a 77 millimeter OD pipe with a 69 millimeter ID, which is inside diameter. I'll be using that in addition to the actual bushing that's going to be replacing the factory rubber one. It's the perfect size and you can press in and out the new and old bushings all in one shot. Using some sort of penetrating lubricant will drastically help with the removal and install of everything, especially if your control arms have a little bit of rust on them. So set the pipe down on the press, followed by the control arm, and then the full race sleeve, which is the aftermarket bushing. Spraying a little bit of penetrating fluid can't hurt, so go nuts. I also placed a flat piece of aluminum on top of the full race sleeve only so it would press straight down and not so much on an angle. It also helps with spreading out the force over the entire bushing. Now I'm not gonna lie, this one bushing was the most difficult one to press in and out. However, it will be so worth it in the end. Using a bit of heat to expand the control arm will also help so feel free to use a map torch or propane torch as I am here. Keep moving the flame around while you're using the torch and then afterwards you can get pressing. You can see that while I'm pumping the lever for the hydraulic press, I'm putting in more than 10,000 pounds of force into the bushing. As the gauge drops, that means that the bushing is moving into place. Slowly, but still moving. You can then use more lube, then do a little bit more pressing, more lube, more pressing, more heat, more pressing, more lube, more pressing, more fatigue, more pressing. As you can tell, we are making progress, so you can see the old bushing getting pressed out while the new bushing is going in. Back to using the shop press another 1,993 times, it looks to be completely seated. After relieving the pressure from the press, we can remove the arm, and inside the sleeve, we'll find the factory bushing. And you can see here, all of this rust is why it was so difficult to remove. So even though this bushing here isn't installed yet, we're gonna continue with working with this one here. So you can see that the outside race of the bushing from full race is installed. Now we still have a couple more components to throw into this bushing. So we have the inner bearing part. We have one of the sleeves. Here is 
the other one. And lastly, we have these two C-clips. Now, as you can tell, we have a bigger one and a smaller one. This larger one is installed on the bottom side of the bushing. So you have to make sure that the flange of this outer portion sits on top of the outside of the bushing. You know you've installed this correctly if you can look at the bottom and you can see that there's the, that little recessed area. That there is where this goes. So to install it, let's flip this upside down. We'll open up this one portion here. Doesn't matter which one you start at. Insert it into the recessed area. Work your way around and it will go until you have the entire thing seated on there. Just like that. And you'll hear it snap into place. Now next up we have the inner portion of the bearing to get installed. So you can see that we have a top portion with these two red half moons in them. The bottom side you can see is completely metal. So we're going to install this with the red portion facing up on the control arm. So it's going to want to go into place like that, but as you can tell, it needs to be pressed in. And to do that, we're gonna be using a 30 millimeter half inch socket. So we're gonna go back to the press for this. So if you guys are using a press like I am, make sure that it's centered before you start pressing it so that it goes in straight. And then when it is centered, you can start putting some pressure on here and it will seat itself into the opening. When the inner bushing is pressed in all the way, you'll be able to see two things. So first off, on the bottom side of the bushing, it will be fully maxed out in there. So it will not be able to go down anymore. The second thing is gonna be found in here on the top side. So you'll be able to see a little recession down there, and that's where that smaller C-clip goes. So just like before, separate the little C-clip, start off with one side, and essentially fish it into place. When you get this fully seated, and when you get this kind of bushing installed, it is going to be well worth it because these spherical bushings have essentially no deflection whatsoever. Last but not least, these two little sleeves need to just go slide into the bushing just like that. One on the top and another one on the bottom. So this factory rubber bushing that we removed from this control arm obviously is not going back in. So this is getting discarded and this here is the new one. Now this bushing is specifically made for an 8th gen Honda Civic. Now this bushing is a part of two bushings that come together that are intended for an 8th gen lower control arm. Now I purchased a master 8th gen kit only so I can use this and a couple other bushings. So half of the kit is actually useless. This front bushing is a different size between the 8th gen and the 9th gen. Also the ILX. This rear bushing is the same size. So we can use this bushing here from energy suspension along with the inner collar. So we're gonna be able to install this into here very easily. Now, given that this is a polyurethane bushing, you can't just throw it in and call it a day. You can do that, it will work. However, it's gonna squeak and it's gonna wear. So what we do need to do first is put on a glove and we're gonna be installing and applying some of energy suspension's lube on the bushing also inside the sleeve here. So this stuff is extremely gooey. You do not want this stuff on your hands because it doesn't come off easily. So all that you need to do is get a little bit of it, put it on your finger and essentially work it into this section here. So basically the outside portion where the bushing would go. And then when you take this apart, you'll also want to apply some on the inside. So you don't need too much. You just need enough so that the bushing itself stays lubricated. You don't want this to be dry on the metal. So once you have that done, you literally just push this into place. And the nice thing about these bushings is that you don't necessarily need a press. So there you go. There's half installed. Moving on to the next side. Make sure you get everything covered, full 360 degrees. You can slide this into place on the other side. Last but not least, we need to install this sleeve into the bushing. So you wanna make sure that you get enough lubricant on the inside of the bushing as well to make sure that it doesn't squeak and doesn't make noise on you after we install the control arm back on the car. This looks a little weird, but I'm telling you guys, this is how the procedure is done. And then once that's in there, feed this through the control arm. Sometimes this is difficult. You might need to literally push on this uh, with maybe your entire body weight to get it into place. But to actually save me a little bit of work, I'm gonna put this in my vise and show you how simple it is using that. You're gonna grab the control arm and the collar and all that you're looking to do is compress the two together. So just like this, and you can see it goes in like butter. 
So there's no reefing on this, there's no anything, and it goes in very nicely, very easily. So with it completely in and seated, that now is installed. This is lubed up, this is good to go, and this is ready to be installed back on the car. Now, moving on to the rear suspension and the bushings that are found down there, we're gonna get started with the rear knuckle. Now, there's two factory bushings found on here. One here, one here. Both of these are made out of rubber. So we're gonna press these out. However, we're not gonna be using the actual press. We're just gonna be using the vise from here on. And uh, this actually does the trick and it's actually easier to use than the press. Because both of these bushings are essentially in line, it isn't exactly the easiest thing to press out using a press. So we're gonna force them out using this vise here. So for this rearward bushing, I have a 31 millimeter deep socket with a 54 millimeter ID sleeve. And by doing this in this configuration, the socket is going to push the bushing through the knuckle. It's gonna go into this collar here. So then at this point, you just tighten this until it goes into place. Now it's gonna release itself. Depending on how strong you are, you might actually need to use like some sort of cheater bar on here so that you can get enough leverage and remove the bushing and slide it out. But this actually isn't too bad. And there you have it. So there's one of the bushings taken care of. Now before we install any bushing inside of here, I'm first gonna clean up this area here because I don't want that to interfere with the new bushing. So a little bit of a, you know, sandpaper, a scotch bright, whatever, just to clean that up, we'll do the trick. And now when you put your finger in there, this should be completely smooth. Next up, this bushing. Now, one thing to note is that this bushing and this bushing here are not identical. We're actually gonna be using a different sleeve and socket to remove this guy. So we're still using a 31 millimeter socket. However, this is a shallow socket, half inch, and we're now using a 56 millimeter ID sleeve. So the socket goes on the inside, the sleeve will go over top on the outside. So as you guys can see here, I'm using a cheater bar. This seems to be doing okay. So from at this point now, I can do the entire thing by hand. And there you have it. We have the socket, the bushing, and then the, the collar. Now, as you can tell, this is completely keeping the bushings intact. So if you ever wanna switch back, maybe you don't like the aftermarket bushings, you can revert back to stock, given that you remove them in the same orientation. Since I have the Energy Suspension Master Kit, I was able to try out a bunch of different bushings for both of these. Now, given that both of them are not the same, we can only use one of the bushings that is intended for the rear position of the rear knuckle. Now, that is the only one that works. For the front one, you will need to use uh, some sort of other bushing. You'll either need to stay stock or you can go with a custom bushing. And that is what this is right here. This is a 95 durometer, which is very stiff, polyurethane bushing, uses the same inner sleeve as the energy suspension one, and this guy here will go on the front one. Don't forget your glove, your lube, and throw both of these bushings into the knuckle. So it's gonna go from this to this. And there you have it. Now, theoretically, I think I could have gotten this bushing here made in the same color red. However, it doesn't make any difference to me. Given that they're both polyurethane, they're gonna offer much less deflection than the factory rubber bushings. Now, this is complete, time to reassemble all this stuff. However, there's still one more bushing to do. This next bushing is part of the rear lower control arm, and there's only one good way to remove it, and that is with fire. Be sure to do this in a very well ventilated area, but grab a torch and keep a map torch pointed directly at the rubber bushing as we're looking to burn and melt all of the rubber out. There are two metal reinforcement plates that will also be inside of there that need to come out. The reason why we need to burn this one out is we need to reuse the factory metal sleeve from this bushing for the energy suspension polyurethane ones. Keep poking away at the bushing with the metal punch or screwdriver until the main sleeve comes out, followed by the first and second metal plates. Using a wire brush will allow you to remove all the remaining rubber and or burn marks from the arm. Letting the control arm cool down is also a good call. Also then following it up with a coat of black paint. 
That will help prevent the arm from rusting due to the paint that's burnt off. With the trailing arm ready to go, take the custom bushing apart and install it in the same manner as the energy suspension ones. Apply a little bit of lube on the inside of the collar, then the outside of the bushing, followed by the other half, the inner bushing, the outer side of the sleeve, and then push it all together. And then there you have it. When you take the control arms out to upgrade the bushings, not only will you have new upgraded bushings installed, but you can also go one step further and install new wheel bearings if yours are making noise, new handbrake cables if yours are rusty or stretched, new brake calipers if they're seized, rotors if they're worn, and ARP extended studs if you're looking for an upgrade. It goes to show that while you're just going in there to upgrade one part, you can easily upgrade so many more things. The front brakes are definitely on the list of future upgrades, but in the meantime, to install the front control arm, cut the zip tie and then slide the arm back into the front subframe. You might need to angle the front spherical bushing to allow the arm to be installed on an angle, but that's the only complicated part for the front assembly. Some anti-seize on the bolts also isn't a half bad idea while you're installing everything. For the rear, since it's a bit bulkier of a unit, use a jack stand to support the weight of the entire assembly as you try and install the one rear trailing arm bolt, followed by the two front trailing arm bolts, and the one camber arm bolt. Once you get those bolts threaded in by hand, all the other smaller pieces like the brake lines, parking brake cables, wheel speed sensors, and rear spring can be installed shortly after. If you purchase the rear shock absorber bushing separately, or if you purchased it with the energy suspension master kit, you can install those now. One of them will slide over top of the shock body facing upwards, where then the shock body will get installed into the body of the car. From inside the trunk, we'll be installing the other bushing face down, then the washer, then the nylon locking nut. Now, one last thing before I wrap up this video. If you guys do decide to change out the bushings on your car and you're installing any kind of bushing, whether it be factory rubber, hardened rubber, or a polyurethane, you do want to ensure that you torque up each and every suspension bolt when the vehicle is under load. So if you have a jack, put it underneath the control arm, raise it up to basically riding level or driving level, torque up all those bolts so that the bushings aren't under pretension, and then you can put the car down put the wheels on the car, and then be on your ways. If you don't do that, you will definitely put more stress on the bushings and prematurely wear them. Now, if you guys wanna find any of the parts that you guys found in this video, then you're gonna find that stuff in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching. I have a bunch more Civic stuff on the way, so stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.